change is going to unsettle you in some way, shape or form. Because I haven't got the answers. I haven't got the answers. Um, it's that fear of the unknown. What does this mean for me? And that can trigger some emotional reactions that can also trigger some questions, some soul searching to go on. The question is from Thinking Focus. So the question today is why do some people think that change can be bad for their career? Hello, I'm Richard from Thinking Focus. Hi, I'm Ricky from Thinking Focus. The question is from Thinking Focus, a podcast about how we sometimes get in our own way and what we can do about it. So, Ricky, as someone that's had a bad career, <laughs> why why do people think that change is bad for their career? Well, I guess people feel that change um, is, is bad because it, it brings on uncertainty. They're not sure how this maps into their plan, their vision for their future. So they might have a fixed vision of where their career's going and what it looks like and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I think I think people kind of imagine their career, they imagine the steps. Um, and imagine when, being successful, because ima- I, guess, I guess not many people imagine having a bad career, do they? No, not until now, till you kind of pointed that out. But um, yeah. But yeah, they, they, they kind of have this vision in terms of the stepping stones they require to make in order to achieve or ascend to that level that they want to be at. Or maybe they're at that level and they're happy there. Uh, that, that could be the case, yeah. So, so actually a change coming along will either derail the plan, that future vision, or actually cause a massive uncertainty to their current reality. What does this mean for me? How is this going to play out? So, but, you know, do you think everybody sits and visualises their career? Or do you think it's an unconscious sort of comfortable state that we get in, which is, I'm, you know, I'm sort of doing okay, I'm, I'm going in roughly the right direction, even though we might not have set a goal or had a desired end state. But this change feels uncomfortable and, and threatens it in some way. Um. I think I think there are people that have a clear strategy in terms of where they want to be. Definitely, but do you think that's everyone, or do you think... No, I, I, I think there are people that are quite happy going along, and then when the change hits, yep. the status quo is now no longer true, and that unsettles them. I think there are people that aspire, but to be better but don't quite understand how they're going to go along that journey and then there are these people as we talked about who have a clear map in terms of where they want to get to either way whichever category you sit in change is going to unsettle you in some way shape or form because i haven't got the answers i haven't got the answers um it's that fear of the unknown what does this mean for me um and that can trigger some emotional reactions that can also trigger some questions some soul searching to go on so how, if this was happening to you, and I guess this probably has happened to you in your career. It sure has, yeah, um, several times. So how, how can you react to it then? What, what could you do to try and get some control back at this time in your life? Um, well, I, I think it, it's about understanding what, what you are what you're good at, what you're not so good at. What Ultimately, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. Um, having a clear vision. So this will create one of two things, a lot of uncertainty and a lot of questions, but it will also create a lot of opportunity. Um, and it's being confident in your own ability to kind of go, hang on a minute, I can, I can make a difference in one way, shape or form to whatever that future will be. And it's asking those questions about where you want to be and what impact you want to have on either the organisation or your career in this particular example we're talking about. Um, So so what you're talking about, therefore, is then not seeing this as a threat, but looking at, okay, where's the opportunity in this? Where's the opportunity? That's a great question. That is not necessarily an easy thing for everybody to do, is it? Because as we've talked about before in these podcasts, sometimes you have an emotional reaction. Very often you have an emotional reaction that says, hang on, this is not good. So you've first of all got to reach an acceptance level with that, haven't you? To be able to ask the question about, okay, so where's the opportunity? Yeah, you have to recognise that you're going to go through that initial reaction Um, Is this happening? Is this happening to me? All of those. But once you've navigated through those early reactions, emotional reactions, uh, which are only natural, given that we're programmed that way, but 
But fundamentally, if you can move to this, I'm going to take control of the things I can control, which is about me and my reaction, which if you can focus those on some questions around, so what does this mean for me? How can I make the most of this opportunity? How can I use this experience to make me better, more equipped for that next opportunity as and when that will emerge? And if I'm managing other people then, and I can see that they're having these concerns... What could I do to help them? I think inevitably it's to understand that they are going to go through that emotional reaction as you talked about. And it's working out, is that reaction a natural reaction or is it starting to bother them? So if this is going on for a while, we really need to start asking them some questions because we know that questions can really help them to think about something more positive, more helpful. So when you say it's starting to bother them, do you mean that they're getting caught in this loop of almost destructive thinking? Yeah, I think I think if, if they're, they're showing signs that they're not progressing with that change reaction, so initially, yes, there's going to be that shock, that denial, but actually what we want to do is get them to focus on what the future state is, but future state for them. So they're starting to become as you used the word earlier, acceptance, that the change is happening. Do I want to carry on resisting this change or do I want to embrace this change as an opportunity? And I think asking them some questions around what might it mean for them, so not definite, but what might it mean for them and how might this help them to progress in terms of the career that they're looking to have. Um, Is there also something in this about loss aversion as well so we talked about loss aversion being actually we're often more frightened of what we might lose than what we could gain Uh, yeah for sure i mean everybody is comfortable in the way things are so when something disrupts that we start to imagine a world without working with certain colleagues working in certain places even the desk we sit at can cause those reactions and that and we know that we value loss far greater than we value gains. Yeah. Um, and therefore, understanding that from a management perspective that goes, how are they likely to react to this? And how might we mitigate or minimise, even eliminate the reaction to that in some way by offsetting that, by looking at what they're going to gain through this? Yeah. But as, you, as, as, we, as we know, people feel loss greater than they do perceived gain. So that might take a while for people to start to recognise that. So that's the mindset shift. That's the mindset shift. But I think also it's about having more gains than losses. So actually you can offset, you know, maybe one loss to several gains in terms of that future state, that new world that we're trying to create for them. Okay. So what we talked about there, Ricky, really is a couple of things. You talked about um, having some questions that you ask yourself that kind of go, okay, so this change has happened. What does this mean for me? What am I good at? Where do I want to be? Where do I want to get to? Where's the opportunity yeah, here for me? Yeah, very much. Rather than focusing on what, why this is all wrong. How can I use this change in a positive way as opposed to reacting to it in a negative way? Yeah. How do you drive that towards your career goals, even though the steps might be the, not the ones you imagined, but actually some different steps that even might create... An, a better opportunity than you first imagined in your preordained plan. And and also and then if you're managing people you talked about or we we mentioned loss aversion, didn't we? And accepting that that happens. But then over over a short space of time starting to help people what help people see what a new future might bring in terms of gains. Now they might not jump all over that straight away, but as that seeds through to the subconscious they might start to create a picture that shows a different future that includes them being successful and the career going well and all those sorts of things yeah. to mitigate the fear of some of the, the loss they might have, which, which, of course, some of that might not be real either. Oh, exactly. We're very good at imagining things that aren't real. We're very good at looking for things that don't exist um, and even looking for the evidence to support that. So actually what we really want them to do is focus on what's real and focus them on those things that are going to help them to achieve their ultimate goal in terms of their career plan and where they want to get to. Thank you, Ricky. Very interesting. And uh, I wish you all the best with your career. (laughs) Thank you very much, Richard. Next time on The Question Is... 
So maybe some of the people that are opting out are displaying some behaviour that kind of goes, no, I'm not doing it. No, this isn't for me. No, I don't think it's right. No, I disagree. All those sorts of things. And the manager doesn't have the skills to have a strong conversation or deal with that. So therefore, I'm going to duck the issue because it's too hard. Thinking Focus works with teams and business units in organisations around the world, helping them achieve breakthroughs by enabling them to think differently. To find out more about our work and how we could help your organisation, go to www.thinkingfocus.com. Hi, this is Paul from Thinking Focus. I just wanted to let you know that this podcast is part of a series on the myths that often occur during times of organisational change. You can find other podcasts in the series and some special resources related to these myths at thinkingfocus.com forward slash myths.